Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Back on the heister project today. So, as you can see here, I have the block. I took it to work and power washed it all out everywhere to get it all cleaned up nice and oil free and remove any residue and get this thing in decent shape to start putting it back together again. Mainly just getting all the passages all blowed out and cleared. So, it looks pretty good. But what I like to do to my engines is to take and seal the insides, all the castings. Old engines years ago were usually done that way. In modern days, it's kind of a, a, a task that has slipped to the wayside. It's not done much anymore. Uh, you know, up through the 70s, it was fairly common to see engines painted inside, but you pretty much don't see it anymore. So, you can see all the flash rust that came on it, but that'll all buff off. Main thing is that I want to try and keep it off of the precision surfaces and everything else I'm going to paint. Uh, the paint serves a couple of functions, mainly when this thing is sitting for long periods of time, you don't have to worry about stuff inside the engine rusting up and you don't wind up you know you might say well what difference does it make if the bottom of this cap gets rusty and it really doesn't but when the engine does start to run and the oil's sloshing around in there it can abrade that rust off from the flow of oil and then wind up running through your system and that does tear everything up so you don't ever want any kind of contaminants in your oil system so the more I can do to keep that from happening, the better. Also, the paint helps to get the oil to drain back into the pan, which is a good thing. Helps carry the heat away better if it's going away. And it seals anything up to keep it from leaking through to the outside. As often as the case with casting, sometimes they're a little bit porous and the oil comes through. I'd say that's probably the case right in here where most of this paint lifted off. You can see it's all bubbled up underneath. And for here they painted over stuff when they painted it, or that has sweated through into the paint. You know, the rest of it's nice and smooth like there. So still got some build up there. You can scrape that out before I paint it. So Got my tools of the trade, my painter's bucket, engine from a sling, my scraper, and my paintbrush, and my John Deere Buff Primer Sealer. Gliptol is probably better for this, but I don't have any of it, but I got Buff Primer Sealer, and I've used that before in the past with success, so that's what I'm gonna use, going here and paint these insides. It won't corrode either, so it'll help protect the cooling passages. Just protects everything. That paint is a nice sacrificial layer to damage, so it never hurts to have something painted unless you're painting a precision surface. Then you really don't want to do that, but other than that, use it. It helps. Well, there it is all cleaned up. So, I've got, uh, got the block all painted inside. And I've gone through and cleaned the paint out of the precision surfaces where the liners fit. Made sure my liner slips in there good like it's supposed to. And all the head gasket area is all cleaned off. And what I did was painted this and then uh, just took a rag and some gasoline, went over and wiped off all the areas that I didn't want paint on. And 
They work good. The rest is all hardening up nice. It's been a couple days. By the time I get ready to put this together, the paint should be good and cured. You can't really do this if it's a job that you're going to do quickly. Same deal on the uh, tan bearings. Cleaned all them up. Just wiped them out with gas. Got the paint out of them. So, kind of dark up in there, but you can still see. But other than that, everything else is nice and painted inside. I left the, uh, the old bearings in there. So when I take them out, uh, there won't be any paint and I can pop the new bearings in. Don't have to worry about any fits. And made sure all the caps were on tight. Everything's torqued down. Before I started painting any of this so there wouldn't get paint in the joints and mess up any of the fits. Everything when this comes out should go right back. And come through and cleaned all the gasket surfaces. Got all the old bits of gasket off and all the paint off. So that's all prepped. Same thing on this front here. Got all the front cover gaskets all stripped off. Cleaned up. Water pump housings cleaned up. Got the oil cooler side all cleaned up, nice painted and sealed inside, so won't have any more rust corrosion issues over time. Uh, should make all this last a lot better. I like engines that are painted on the inside and the outside. I think it makes them hold up better. But your mileage may vary and use at your own risk. Uh, it sure makes it look nicer inside anyway. I don't know how it'll last over time, but for now it looks good. I like a nice, fresh, clean looking block. Mm. That's just wire wheeled all the corrosion off one of these old liners. It's like a glove. Slide right in there. Doesn't have the O-ring on it, so it's not quite as tight a fit. But other than that, I think the block is prepped. So be ready to start going back together. Initially, my plan was to uh, put a VE pump on this thing, but I've been unable to locate a pump drive gear that would match up to the taper on it. I thought a pump one would do it, but the one I found didn't have a keyway in it. I'm not really a fan of the gears without keyways. They slip over time. So didn't really want to use that. So I said, well, I'll uh, I'll do a P-pump because I got a P-pump gear with the keyway in it. However, that gear won't work with that timing cover because that timing cover is set up for an A-pump and can't bore it out because there's not enough meat there to put the studs in to the outside. So I really need a C cover. Plus, it's shaped a little different. So I got the cover plus the tin cover for the P-pump if I go that route. Plus I need a set of lines I don't have. And a pump, which I don't have, because the only P-pump I got is a, off of a B model. And these lube to the front, and B's lube to the side, which wouldn't be a huge deal. I could plug that off and do something different, make it work, but uh, same time that P-pump I got has been messed with, it's got like 4,000 RPM springs in it. Not really something I would desire in a sensitive operating forklift. I want really fine governor control and good startability. That's the goals of this, not a racing machine to make 1,000 horsepower. 
that's not necessary for a forklift. Its job is to pick stuff up and put it down precisely, not to go fast. So, got to accumulate the parts for that. I did get a oil cooler cover, so the one was broken. I got that fixed. I got a new oil pump, so I got that part ready. Be able to start going back with that. So I guess really my main holdup is in what I'm gonna do for this front cover situation. I may just wind up buying another block with the right stuff on it to rob it off of. I need to try and find an engine that's got a rod out the side that I can steal all these bits from and use my good block. Would probably be my best solution. So I just gotta keep my eye out for one of those. For that to happen, uh, I had a front gear cover off of an ISL, another engine job I got going. And I was, well, I had to take a P-pump, but it won't fit a C block, the bolt pattern's different. So even though this fits an ISC, a standard C is different bolt pattern. The covers won't ever change. So that option's out too. I was thinking I could put that one on for now to build this engine and then just get another one back later to put on the other engine. But that's not gonna work either. So next bit of business, I guess will be tackling this crankshaft and seeing if it can make it beautiful. So I'm gonna get it over in the Monarch lathe and take my special curved belt sander deal. You've seen Adam Booth has a better version of this, but this is what I got just to try on this job. Should work. And go in there and match these curves. So polish this out, hopefully. I'll have enough room to be able to, to sand that around and not crash into the counterweights. Be nicer if it was longer, but I, I barely got enough room probably to polish them up. I'll turn it real slow. I guess I could build an extension and come up with a longer belt. Yeah, it really needs to be about four inches longer, so. so I took this part. I think I'm just gonna fabricate myself an extension for this. Just make a longer rod, maybe six inches or so. And that should give me plenty of good clearance to where I won't have to worry about the counterweight smashing into my hand while I'm trying to polish this crank, so. I think just a little polish up of a tool like this would be all it'll take to get what I need out of it. Oh, I'm going to see what I can find for belts because I guess that's going to dictate how much length I need to put in here. So I'll research that and I guess that'll probably be the next task could be building that. So I can fix that. So I can assemble that. So if you're one of my new subscribers, uh, Apparently, thanks to the old Dodge video, I know that video is really taking off. People seem to like seeing that old junk getting fixed. Uh, I will probably do a video on it not too long into the future of cleaning it up. Some. I know a bunch of people wanted to see it cleaned up as a reward for it starting and working. And I do have wood out here to haul, so I'll be getting on that soon too. Currently, right now, we're having thunderstorms and rain for the next two days, pretty much off and on all day is what they're saying so not a lot of activity going on outside uh, you may have heard the thunder in the background as i'm finishing up this video and the humidity is terribly high which makes this paint not dry so fast either so gotta give it plenty of time don't want the oil to be taking any of that off uh, once it goes into operation but it was good and clean and steamed before i painted it so i think it'll stay on good I don't feel any where it feels like it wants to come loose. So, and I wiped gas on it and it didn't come off. So, probably safe to say it's going to hold up okay. Looks good.
So that's my update on putting the engine back together. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you later. Not really the kind of weather for driving old trucks around that don't have floorboards in them.